welcome to the Flame and Fiber podcast. My name is Barbara. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Diva S. And I'd like to say hi. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to the new people. Hello. Nice to meet you. I hope you enjoy the podcast. And thank you again to everyone who's watched before and has come back. I really, really appreciate it. Um, this is a knitting podcast. Oh, looks like I should have shut my drawers and cleaned up a little, huh? Well, I was looking for something. <laughs> oh, well. Um, soon this podcast will have some spinning because I'm getting the urge to get back to spinning. I moved my spinning wheel up from the basement when we, not the basement, from the living room when we got Pearl, our German Shepherd puppy, who is a pill an ad adorable, lovely, sweet dog who's driving me crazy. And so um, I moved it up to this room, which is a total mess. And I had been spinning while watching TV or watching podcasts on TV. And um, once the spinning wheel came up here, I did very little spinning. In fact, I'm in the middle of plying yarn and I have been for six or eight months. So so we got her in May, so it is almost a year since we got her. It Today is May 2nd. It's Wednesday. And um, so anyway, I'm expecting to have some spinning on the podcast. Uh, if you're a longtime viewer, you know I bought my first fleece at Maryland Sheep and Wool last year. And I took some of the wool home with me and process, processed it myself, but the rest of it I gave to a mill to make into pencil roving for me. And uh, it's the Meadowland something mill. I'll put the name of it down here. I don't have my pencil roving yet. I called her in December. It was supposed to take three months. I called her, you know, we were away, a lot going on. I wasn't spinning. So I finally emailed her in at the end of the last year and said, you know, hey, what's the story? She called she called in February and for, unfortunately I was um, unavailable at that moment and Dennis spoke to her and she said she would have my pencil roving in a couple of weeks and she had had some illnesses and but I haven't heard back and I I emailed her this week saying I'm going to Maryland Sheep and Wool and I want to pick up my fleece I'll pick up roving or I'll pick up raw fleece but I want my fleece back and if you're going to Maryland Sheep and Wool, bring it and I will pick it up there. And I haven't heard anything. I did not see them listed on the list of vendors at Maryland Sheep and Wool, which is not a surprise. I mean, if she's a year behind, then she'd be foolish to put herself in a position to be two years behind. But anyway, <laughs> so I have done a little spinning this year because I did, I did clean that... Um, I'm pouring my coffee into my cup. I did clean a little bit of that wool that I took home. I felted most of it. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's my first fleece. But I did um, spin up some of it, and, you know, I would like to have the rest of it. Oh, and my hat is right here because I still haven't blocked it. So this is what my wool looks like. This is my wool. This is the beautiful wool that Juanita sent me. She spins. She has a podcast. And um, she has an Etsy store where she sells her hand spun. But this is what my wool would look like if I ever got it back. And I spun this, you know, a year ago. Well, not really. Eight, ten months ago. So, you know, who knows when I start spinning again what that's going to look like. But, you know. Anyway, I'm having coffee. It's the afternoon. I'm having coffee in my beautiful Goldfinch mug. That's reflecting that David Dog Dare gave me for Christmas, which I love, which I'm going to be very, very careful with. Because last podcast, I was having a Cosmo in a beautiful glass that I loved, past tense, while I was editing my podcast. Pearl knocked over my glass and broke it. I was so upset. And in addition to that, Dennis walked in with my wooden box. And I'll put a picture of the wooden box here, I think, if I remember. 
that I talked about being my solution to the pearl getting my yarn problem. And Pearl had opened the box and was busy chewing on the piece of wood that was dividing the two sides of the box. So between the box and my martini glass, which my daughter gave me that I loved, I burst into tears. I was actually sobbing. It has been quite a while since I cried that hard. I was so frustrated and so upset. <sighs> and you know, then then Dennis comes. Oh, I'm so jealous. You know, she doesn't she doesn't come to me like she comes to you. She, you know, it's like yeah, you're so jealous. She's targeting me. <laughs> takes my stuff. Yesterday we're both sitting out on the deck and out comes Pearl with my sunglasses in her mouth. This morning I'm sitting out on the deck, out comes Pearl with my book in her mouth. I'm like, oh, this dog, and she she's a smart dog. She knows she's not supposed to do that. <sighs> she's forcing me to be a neater person than is my nature. <laughs> and while being neater, would make me feel better. Being forced to do it by my dog is a little annoying. So anyway, I will be careful with my mug because I love it too. I love it. So that's the Pearl story. I swear, not an hour after I finished recording that podcast, those two beautiful things were... Well, the box isn't ruined. Dennis rescued the box. And the box is not ruined. There's a little scratch on the lid. But it's on top of the mantle. It can't, it, it's not serving the purpose I bought it for. And my, my martini glass went in the trash. <laughs> I have been kind of bummed lately. And I'm not exactly sure why. Um, part of it is the house is a complete disaster, and after a while, even I, who have a hugely high tolerance for clutter and mess, it was starting to get to me. Unfortunately, my reaction to feeling like that is to not want to do anything, so, <laughs> which is a little counterproductive when all you have to do is clean up. So I had a burst of energy yesterday, and I did quite a few things that have made me feel better because I got some things done. And um, so I'm feeling better, which is why I'm podcasting. Because even, you know, I didn't even want to podcast. I was like, I don't want to do anything. I'm like rereading books I read a month ago. It's like, I don't want anything new going on. Dennis thinks it's a reaction to the bad news that we got. It's not terrible news. I mean, but it's bad news. So I have some bad news and some good news in my life. You're getting a little live stuff right at the beginning. <sighs> my wonderful son, Jason, and his lovely wife, Allison, are taking our two granddaughters and moving them to Florida. Now, Florida is a nice place. I don't want to live in Florida. They live an hour from us, so we have been so involved with these girls' lives. And it's been a gift. It's been such a gift. The first, when, you know, when Allison went back to work when Isabel was one. For the next two years, we were Wednesday childcare. And so we had her every week. And it was such a joy. Such a joy. And it's so, you know, it, it is a gift. We don't know um, Sammy quite as well at this age as we knew Isabel. But she's also an angel doll and... Anyway, so I'm kind of sad. Yeah, I think that's understandable. But as Jason said, Mom, you can go to Chile for a month. You can come to Florida. <laughs> and it is true. We can go to Florida, and we will go to Florida. So Florida, you'll be seeing more of me, <laughs> for sure. They're going to move to the Tampa St. Pete area. So. <laughs> so if you know of any good yarn shops, I know there's a good yarn in Sarasota because my friend Linda lives in Sarasota, and so I've been there. So... So anyway, but, you know, it's a bummer. But they were one of the main reasons that we decided not to move when we retired. So, But we have our parents around, 
and so we'll be here while they're around. We're lucky to have them and we want to be here to help them and spend time with them. But after that, who knows? I don't know. Dennis really liked Chile. We may be moving to Chile. Who knows? I mean, I can go to Florida from Chile just as easy as I can go to Florida from here. Well, not quite, but you know what I mean. So anyway, so that's the sad news. But this week we also had great news. And um, you're not allowed to post this on Facebook. This is not for pu for public publication. So promise me you won't put this on Facebook. But our daughter, Christy, got the job she wanted. Yay! It's not finalized yet. The contract isn't signed, so she didn't want to announce it generally until the contract is signed. But you guys won't tell. And we are so excited. Our daughter, Christy, is Dr. Christy. And she is a medieval historian with her PhD from the University of Iowa. And I used to joke at work when I was talking about her and say, I'll be, I'll be supporting that child for the rest of her life. I mean, a medieval historian, you know, there are three jobs in the country every year for a medieval historian. Three. Do you know how many medieval historians are matriculated a year? More than three, let me tell you. So anyway, that, you know, and of course she wants to teach. I mean, and she's doing research and she's very interested in women's agency in the in medieval times and which is in women's agency is a big topic these days so she's right on trend <laughs> but anyway she's been a visiting professor at the Mississippi University for Women in Columbus Mississippi and for the last three years and um, they finally posted the job and she got the job so now she has a permanent tenure-track position at a school that she's really enjoying teaching at, you know, I mean, the only problem is it's in Mississippi and nothing against Mississippi, but it's far away from us and it's a hot place and we don't want to live in Mississippi either. So, but everything else she loves. I mean, she's met a fella that she likes a lot and the department is wonderful and it's a very small public university where she can do all kinds of cool stuff and she has been. So anyway. Dennis and I went out to dinner and celebrated. <laughs> we were so excited. We were so excited. So that's the good news. So anyway, 12 minutes in, 13 almost. Hi, everybody. This is a knitting podcast, and I will start talking about knitting. This is the first podcast of 2018 where I do not have a finished sweater to show you. Every other podcast in 2018, I have shown you a finished crazy, right? Well, the um, SSK Knit Along is over. Um, I'm going to SSK, which is the Super Summer Knit Together that is um, sponsored by the Knit Girls. And um, they have a knit along to get points for door prize tickets. And um, the first, knit, they have several of them. And the first one is knitting the patterns of the teachers that are going to be there and Isabel Kramer who is one of my favorite designers ever is going to be one of the teachers I'm so excited I so hope I get into her class um and so any reason to knit Isabel Kramer is a good reason for me and so I knit four Isabel Kramer sweaters between January 1st excuse me my room is a mess between January 1st and April 30th and um so they qualified for the knit along. I knit some mitts. Kirsten Kapoor is also one of the teachers and I am not that familiar with her work, but I knit a pair of fingerless mitts of her, from her pattern. And uh, Laura Nelkin is also one of the teachers and I bought the kit to make her novelty sweater. If you watch the Knit Girls, um, Leslie's making that one. But that one did not fly off my needles, and I it's not finished, and so it's not going to qualify for the knit along. I am hoping that I can get it finished by July so I can wear it to SSK, because that would be nice to do. It's a summer sweater, and I'll show it to you, excuse me, because I did work on it. But I do have a finished object, and this is my A Girl's Best Friend 
by Isabel Kramer. And I am so happy with it. It seems to be a little, well, maybe it's not. It's when I tried it on before it was blocked and it's only half blocked. Um, I thought it seemed small, but now it doesn't. I have not woven in the ends. In fact, when I blocked it, I realized that my bind off was way, way, way too tight. And so I um, couldn't block it properly. And I had to take the bind off off out and rebind it off, which I have. And now it's nice and loose. So I need to block it again because I didn't get the, the um, lace open enough. I don't think this lacy textured part. So I'm going to block it again, but I haven't done that yet. I think I'll weave in the ends before I block it again and I'll sit down. So I, the three yarns I used in this, the yellow is, um, woolen vine yarn and the colorway is angry orchard. The dark green, which is also here, is a naturally dyed yarn that I got from my favorite booth at Maryland Sheep and Wool last year. And it is naturally dyed with Osage, Orange, and Indigo. And I, they don't really have a name for this company that does this. They only go to, they don't have a website and they only go to shows. And so it is the first booth I'm going to, um, come Saturday, which is Maryland Sheep and Wool. And the third color, which was sort of the color that everything was built around, is Traveling Yarns, Less Traveled Yarn, in the Cleopatra colorway. And I absolutely love, 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 love that color. And I love the whole thing. I'm so happy with the shawl. It is warm and squishy. Um, I mixed types of yarn. The um, Volan Vine and the Naturally Dyed are a nice plump sock yarns, uh, fingering, and the Cleopatra is a single. But I think it works, and I'm really tickled with it. Uh, one modification is I ran out of the Cleopatra before I finished my lace section. So I just finished, this was supposed to be a one, you know, a two, two row garter stripe in this color here. But instead I just finished off the, the pattern, which was four rows in the green. And then I did the garter stripe in the, um, angry orchard and then just kept on with the, with the, um, same stripe and that's where the baubles are. So when I was doing, I think I made the final ribbed green section a little bit bigger because my yellow section was a little bit bigger and I thought it looked better. And it's also very warm. Today's the warmest day we've had all year. So I'm not gonna be wearing my shawl. But I think it, I think it works. It still works. And I'm really, really, really happy with it. And I love the yarn. So I finished that. And this was Isabel Kramer, a girl's best friend. And so I finished it in time for the knit along, which ended on the 30th. So that was good. So I, I should go back and add up all the, look on my project pages and add up all my yardage because I get a ticket for every 100 yards I knit with. And I get two extra tickets because the mitts were um, knit from hand spun. I could have gotten more points if I had yarn from the vendors the, that are selling yarn at um, the marketplace at SSK, but I don't have any of their yarn. <clears throat> I might have one skein from one company, but I do intend to have more after SSK. I'm especially looking forward to see some of um, Amy Florence's uh, Stranded Dye Works. She's going to be there with her yarn, and I'm very excited to see it in person and pick some of that. But there are lots of interesting yarns going to be there. So if you're in the Nashville area, they do open the marketplace on Saturday to the public if you're not going to SSK. My other finished object, which again, no ends woven in, is my 2x2 two two hat by Anna Ann Gagnon. 
And this is the charity hat I'm doing also for a uh, knit along for points at um, SSK. And this is made out of Knit Picks Bravo Worsted. And this is a very nice acrylic yarn. Um, I'm somewhat tempted to make myself a sweater out of this yarn just because, you know, I have an, a fleece that's, you know, wash it, throw it in the dryer that I wear all the time that's getting worn out that I want to replace. And it might be nice just to have something that, you know, I would work in the yard in. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I hate working in the yard, but you know what I mean. So anyway, this is my second work in progress. No, finished object. So I finished two things, the shawl and the hat. And of course I didn't stop knitting. Although I, I did a little bit. I, you know, I read a lot more in the last few weeks than I have been because that, that knit along, I pushed it too much. It was too, it was driving my knitting too much. It was driving my knitting decisions too much. I overdo things. I overdo things. And so I was overdoing that to the point where it was making me unhappy. So I stopped. Gave myself a talking to my ladies at my knit night helped. Dennis helped. So I gave myself a talking to, and so now I'm trying to be better. Although they did just start another knit along that I think is going to work well for my, you know, try to be more chill attitude about my knitting. That's what I'm having, a try to be more chill attitude. You may not recognize it because it may look a lot like my normal. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that chill. So anyway, I started a new hat. Maybe one of these days I'll. So I, you, I use a long tail cast on and I use one of my old colors in on one side so that I don't have to figure out how much. And then when they turn it up, it's like a nice little pop of color. So this is great. This is Nitpix Bravo Worsted. And, um, the two by two, same hat. This is number, this one is five. So this is six plus the one I can't find. So this is number seven. Ooh, ooh, well that's gonna work because the new, the new knit along for SSK is, um, this is their seventh year. Seventh year of SSK, I think, not of podcasting. I think they just had their 10th anniversary of podcasting. That's crazy. But SSK, this is the seventh one. So the knit along from May 1st to July 1st is it has to relate to the number seven somehow. You just have to make it relate to seven. It can, you can use a size seven needle. You can start it on the seventh of the month. It could, so, I mean, that's doable. I can make anything be a seven, you know, so that's not the same as, it feels like a different kind of knit along than the one we just finished. So this is my seventh hat. So I will ask them if I can double dip with this because if it's my seventh hat, then I can put it in the seven knit along. Plus I'm going to get points for it because it's a charity hat and I get points for turning in charity hats at the door. I will check. Is that just being greedy? But it is the seventh hat. But only if I can find that other hat, right? <laughs> Which, again, I have not looked for. Oh, here's my bag that had, um, for my shawl, this is what I have left over for the, from the Angry Orchard. And this is how much of the green I have left over. So this was a, I don't know why. I, I thought it was a smallish ball, but apparently not. So I have these two left over. I need to knit my um, squares for the Sister Survivor blanket that um, the, the Thistle Hollow is doing. And um, I'm already late. So hopefully Evelyn will be able to go to Maryland Sheep and Wool, but if not, then I'll mail them. But I'm gonna make a couple squares for that Sister Survivor blanket. Check out the Thistle Hollow. 
um, channel on YouTube. She's done a couple videos. and So anyway, she's making a blanket, and I'm helping. And I might just use these colors because they're so beautiful. Um, so, Angry Orchard, Bull and Vine. This is the yarn I made. I used in my um, shawl. This is Feeling Koi by Yakagani Yarns. Think I've got a color thing going on? The Feeling Koi by Yakagani Yarns is what I'm making my next sweater out of. I cast on a sweater yesterday, and when I finish it, it will be the seventh sweater I finished this year for the win. So that will be perfect for the seven knit along. See, it's no pressure. I, you do get extra points if you knit something from designed by someone who will be at the SSK event, like even a participant, but I don't have the, I don't know who's going to be there. So I, I'm just not going to worry about that part. I'm just going to knit what I want to knit and I can look them up and see if they're going to be there. And if they are, I get extra points. So my plan was I was going to knit so I got this beautiful yarn. Let me let me just jump around. I got this beautiful yarn that I love at the Allentown Fiber Festival. And this is Yakagani yarn. Yakagani yarn. Yakagani Yarns. It's a Pennsylvania company. Yakagani is a river, apparently. In Somerset Silk, it's 70% superwash merino, 30% silk. It's a single, and it's called Feeling Koi. K-O-I. I fell in love with this yarn. So this is my swatch. Isn't that beautiful? This color is pretty good. And I swatched for the Tegna. Now, this is a beautiful, beautiful sweater. And I know it's not exactly my style, but I thought, oh, I'm going to go for it anyway. I'm just going to make it longer because I don't need a, you know, midi sweater. But I'm going to make it longer, but it's so lovely. I'm going to be so happy with it, right? So I cast it on, and for my size, you have to cast on 420 stitches. Now, one thing she says in the um, pattern is you've got to do a, a swatch because she said her um, test knitters used anywhere from a four to a seven to make this, you know. So she didn't, she's not even giving you a, a needle size. you got to figure it out. Mine was a seven. Well, I started at seven, I, and I liked the fabric. I just had that in my hand. I liked the fabric and I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to go. It's a, it's a tiny bit see-through. I think I'm going to need to wear a, a, uh, can you see through that a little bit? I'm probably going to have to wear a tank top under it or something. So I didn't want to go lighter. Now this is a, single you know it's probably lighter than the yarn that you know it called for but anyway i was still off it was supposed to be 21 stitches for four inches and i'm getting 23. so but it was close enough uh you know for me that's that's nailing it <laughs> for my for my gauge because my gauge watches are so uh, my, my gauge is so wacky compared to everybody else's, I guess. So anyway, so I cast on, um, I guess that was on the 30th. Today's the 2nd, so that was on Monday. Cast on 420 stitches and then had Dennis help me four times trying to connect it in the round without, without twisting it because... That was very frustrating. And I knit about three rows on it before bed. And when I woke up yesterday morning, I'm like, Barbara, you're out of your mind. 
420 stitches at your gauge. Well, not even at your gauge. At the gauge, she said, and is 80 inches. I'm like, 80 inches. So this is basically a really cute boxy with some lace detail and the slightest bit of shaping. I mean, if you look at the, you know, a little bit of shaping. I mean, it does flare a lot out for the, you know, but that's, you know, she says that she, you should be wearing it five to 10 inches positive ease. So I woke up in the morning and said, you're crazy. You're not gonna, you're not gonna wear this sweater. It's not gonna look good on you. Don't do it. So I didn't. I took it out and decided I am not making the Tegna, which is a little frustrating because I paid for the pattern. I have no idea who I'm going to ever make that sweater for. So now I have a pattern that I paid, what, $7 for that I can't give away. I can't sell it. I can't give it away, and I can't give it back. So that's a little frustrating. When I buy a book and, it, you know, this uh, not for me, I can give it to somebody and they can use it, you know. So that's one of the frustrating things about the way patterns are distributed these days. But um, that's a very small downside to the big upside of having all these patterns available. Like that. Just like, oh, I want to knit that. Click, print, knit. So... I guess I shouldn't complain. Sometimes you're going to pick the wrong the wrong one. And I picked it. What I'm going to knit is the Summer Dreams. This is Marcella Chang's um, new pattern. It's not her newest because she released the Summer at the Beach. Sunset at the Beach, which was the pattern I test knit for her. She released it yesterday. So if you wanted to do that sweater... Oh, I'll put a picture of me in the sweater here. I love this sweater. Oh my gosh. It is... The best fitting sweater I've made this year, and I've made six, <laughs> and the one I'm happiest with. And I just, my bus size is a 44. I did a 44. The only change I made was I am I made it longer because I, I didn't, her, her sample looked a little short in the front. I wanted it longer. So I made mine longer. I love that sweater, and I wear it, and I like the yarn too. I think it looks great. Anyway, there's me in my sweater. But this is the other sweater that she had. Um, she was looking for a test knitter around the same time as that one, but I didn't, I was on vacation and I couldn't knit them both. So anyway, so this is a lovely summer sweater with a nice lace detail. The lace is a little shorter uh, and then it has a lace yoke up here. I have never done a yoke sweater, so this will be my first yoke sweater. So instead of doing the Tegna, I'm doing Summer Dreams by Marce Marcella Chang. And this is it. I'm doing it on a very small needle. <laughs> oh, well, I'm doing it on a seven, but I'm doing it on a very small cord because I only had a small cord or really two big cords. So I decided to do the small cord, but I'm past the lace, which of course looks terrible because it's not blocked. And I'm starting up the body of the sweater. And I just started um, alternating skeins. I did not want to alternate skeins while I was doing the lace. I just thought that would be too hard. So I, I've only gone about a half an inch since I started alternating skeins. But I really love it. I'm enjoying knitting this yarn. I have four balls of it. And I'm alternating skeins. But when I need to do my fourth ball, I'm going to be sad because this is what my fourth ball looks like right now. I had so much trouble winding it that I thought, oh, well, let me try this. Let me try that. So I have these partial balls, but they're a mess. And then I have this. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you I'm hoping I only need three balls. <laughs> of yarn for this sweater. I know it's not going to be true. I'm going to need this yarn. So oh, I'm going to give myself a nice iced tea on a beautiful afternoon and sit on my deck and figure out my yarn situation because right now it's looking pretty sad. <laughs> but 
that's for another day. Right now I have three lovely skeins in my little baggies, which I, it's, it's actually a little yeah, more yellowy than that. So I'm loving this. So I'm making Summer Dreams by Marcella Chang. And I think this is going to be beautiful. And apparently this is the color I want to knit because this is almost exactly the same color. <laughs> but actually, I'm not sure I have any more of this color. And I just bought this at the at the festival. I'm <laughs> We'll see what I come home with from Marilyn Sheep and Woody, but it's all yellow. Because I did, a, oh, I'm wearing my Selgri, my second Selgri that I made. This is in a yarn that I can't remember who made it, but the colorway is Winter um, winter Woods. And I will put the yarn company down here. But it's kind, it's a, it's a silk. So it's like a, it must be like a Tessa silk. Because it feels almost like raw silk, but it's lovely. And I made one of my first Selgri that I made, I made out of this color from that natural dye company um, that they dyed in the colorway made from Osage Orange. And I really liked that. But I didn't have quite enough, so my is a little short. But I love it anyway, and I'm wearing it. It was my first one. I did better on this one. I made it a little wider at the shoulders, and I'm much happier with this one. In terms of the fit, but I like the yarn better. This was a yarn that I really loved what it looked like in the skein. And I don't love it quite so much in the sweater. So that's kind of too bad. But it feels great. It fits great. And I wear it. And I'll wear it. Don't worry. Okay, so that is the sweater that I'm knitting on. My new sweater that I'm knitting on. That will be my seventh finished sweater, so it works for the knit along. The one that I did not finish yet, but I did work on, is the Novelty, which is by Laura Nelkin. And this is that kit that I bought from Craftsy. And this is out of a Pima Cotton yarn. And I knit quite a bit more than um, I had when last I podcast. But I don't see... I don't see a progress keeper to show you where I was when last I podcast. But anyway, I was way not this far. So I have split, I, ha I hadn't split for the neckline yet, so, so there, you know, so I have knit that much. So I'm knitting, the way this is going to work is, of course I have it on backwards. Let me mess up my hair trying to put on a sweater that I, oh no, I had it on frontwards. So... So it goes like this. This is the sleeve up here. So I'm knitting it across. This is the V-neck right here. And now I'm going back up. So I went down. So this is going to be, hmm, I wonder if I'm going to be unhappy with how wide that neck is. I'm not sure. So you decrease down to here, the bottom of the V, and then you increase back up. And you knit you're knitting with, oh, why am I messing my hair up? You're knitting with two balls at a time because you're knitting the front and the back at the same time. This is a wacky sweater. It's hard to explain without sounding like you're a crazy person. So this is, this is what's going on. So, so I'm knitting down the rest of the front and the back, and I'm going across this way, and then I'll do a sleeve. But I stopped knitting 
because I realized that there is my decreases going down to my V and here are my increases coming back. Uh, yeah, it's an increase I've never done before. You go down two stitches below. and Anyway, I got some of them where they look okay, but not all of them and not the first ones that I did. So I have to tear back on the front this much of my knitting to get back to here so I can redo this part and do a better job on those increases. And I'm going to do that, but I haven't done it yet. I have to figure it, you know, I have to keep track of how many rows I'm tearing off because I'm going to stop, you know, right now I'm knitting the front and the back at the same time. They're exactly matched. I know, you know, whatever. So I'm going to tear this one back to here. I'm going to have to put that on another needle and have it wait till I get back up here again. So I'm going to have to know exactly where I am. Anyway, it felt like a lot of work for a sweater that wasn't going to get finished in time for the knit along. And that I'm not really loving knitting this cotton. And I'm not sure how the sweater's going to turn out. But you can see that I'm more than halfway. Well, I was more than halfway. No, actually. When I tear this back, I will still be less than halfway because after you knit, after you knit the whole thing, so here's the Here's the sleeve. Then there's a lace panel, like this lace panel here. Then you knit a lace panel that goes on the inside of the sleeve and down the whole side of the the whole side of the sweater. So even when you're finished with the front and the back, you're not you still have this panel here that needs to be knit. And that knits the you know, hooks the front and the back together. So it's a very interesting construction. And, you know, I've just decided I'm going to put myself in her hands. She's a professional. <laughs> and hope that it fits me when I'm done. Maybe I'll finish it on the 7th. <laughs> and it can count. <laughs> I'll think, oh, what size needle am I using? I know it's not the 7th. Seven, 7s, no, I'm using the 6s. That's where my 6s are. And that's where my, my Lika. So anyway, that is the last thing I worked on. And um, I have gladly put that aside to work on my summer dreams. And I was sitting out on the deck this morning. It's a warm day. Sitting on the deck with Pearl while she was chewing on my book. The little brat. Enjoying the weather and knitting and when I'm done recording this, Dennis is going to go out because we can't leave her alone. <laughs> He's going to go out and pick up the sticks, work on picking up the sticks from the front yard so that I can mow because we still haven't mowed the front yard for the first time. We did the backyard, so that was good. I have one more creative thing that I did since my last podcast. I watched the Truly Myrtle podcast, and I guess she had been doing podcasts before and she stopped for a little while. And I was not familiar with her and I didn't know her patterns or anything, but she seems like a lovely lady and I like her podcast. She's from Australia, I think. And um, she was test sewing these pants. These are the Aren Aren Arenite pants by So Liberated. And these are not a very good drawing, but you can see there are three different versions, elastic at the bottom, a knit thing at the bottom, and just a hem. And I decided, yeah, I'm not seeing any. <coughs> I just, I haven't knit myself a garment in decades. I've sewn, I mean sewn myself a garment in decades. I've sewn, you know, I sewed aprons at Christmas. I've sewn project bags. I haven't made myself something to wear in a long time, and I have no idea why I thought I wanted to do that. But here's the picture where they show all different size people wearing these pants, and I thought I would give it a try. 
Well, this is, you know, newfangled. Back in the olden days, you bought a pattern and it was on this thin, you know, pattern tissue. It was on thin pattern tissue. And you laid it out on, you know, cut it out. Not now. Now, you get a PDF file and you have to send it to your printer and print 45 pages from your printer. Here's a picture of my pattern after I got it all taped together, which was an all-night project. So then I get it all taped together and then you transfer it to this Swedish pattern paper cloth stuff, which is a lot like interfacing. It feels a lot like interfacing. So then you, you trace your pattern pieces on this paper, which of course Pearl loved and grabbed before I even started and I lost a yard of it because it was all messed up. I'm telling you this dog. So anyway, so I have, so I, so this is as far as I've gotten. I've cut out all my pieces on this Swedish pattern paper and I have um, washed my fabric and I've got my ironing board out and you know, that took all my energy. I didn't even get the pattern cut out yet out of my fabric, let alone sewn. And it's been a while. But, so now it's sitting there like it's one more thing that I need to do that I'm not doing. Which, is kind of a drag. I st have to stop doing that. I have to stop doing that. So anyway, so that's my creative sewing, which I do plan on doing, but I haven't gotten much past getting the pattern organized. But really, that took quite a bit of work surprising how much work that was so so that's that it's Wednesday uh, Marilyn Sheep and Wool is on Saturday I'm gonna be there on Saturday now I wish I had looked it up before I started recording um, Aquila from the Le Lefty Knitters podcast told me that they're talking about an, a um, podcasters meetup in one of the sheds, milk shed or something, at one o'clock on Saturday. I will look it up. I will put that here or put it at the end. Um, so if you're it, at Maryland Sheep and Wall, um, come by or if you see me, stop me. Tomorrow or Friday, I have, well, I guess it's got to be tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to have to go in my studio and make some stitch markers so I'll have some swag because I don't have enough made so I will be making some stitch markers for swag so I will be bringing swag so please come and say hi and get your stitch marker um but I have to do them tomorrow because they have to be in the kiln overnight and then on Friday I have to make stitch markers so so that's what I'm gonna do so anyway uh, if I had notes, I would. Ooh, I have a goodie. I have a goodie. I'm sorry. Um, spoiler alert. If you haven't gotten your April year at Toad, uh, Toad Hollow, a year at the Museum Yarn Club, and you don't want to be spoiled, look away. This is what the inspiration was. This is um, for Scythia Ronda by Missen Holdorf. I have never heard of any of these artists so this is so much fun but this is the inspiration I'm showing and this is the yarn isn't that beautiful it's got some green in it but mostly a very beautiful variegated purple and that is showing actually the right color so this is Toad Hollow for Crafty Toads if you watch them I'm sure you do they're wonderful um, and this is Sock Toad, <laughs> formerly Drusilla Base. Okay, they used to call it Drusilla Base. Now they're calling it Sock Toad. Drusilla is their dog. And this is an 8020 Superwash. And this is, I love this base. It's really soft. It's beautiful. I'll tell you the truth. I have been throwing around an idea in my mind of trying to see 
if I can incorporate all the year of the museum yarns in one big piece, like a sweater or a giant shawl, um, well, I won't be able to do them all because it's a year at a museum, but I have, this is my fourth one and they're all beautiful. I love them. And I should have brought the other ones in here and looked at them to see if they go together. But I just had this idea, you know, I just have these beautiful yarns. I'm not going to make socks out of them. Well, number one, I'm not making socks these days, although I'm starting to think about getting back into socks. Um, but I'm not I have too many things that need to be socks. This does not need to be socks. This is too beautiful. But I have this idea. I'll have to see how they all go together. But I hope they do, because I'm making a plan. So I was really happy with this. Oh, and here's the, um, if you want, this is Rose Windows. This is the May inspiration. It's a beautiful stained glass windows from churches. So anyway, what the heck are they going to do with this one? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to it. But so anyway, so that's my goodie. That's the only goodie that has arrived. I have purchased a couple more goodies on the internet, but they have not arrived yet. And then I'm going to Maryland Shape and Wall. Although I am feeling like I really don't need a lot of yarn, and um, which doesn't mean I'm not gonna buy yarn. I'm not trying to say that. But I'm going to be looking for things other than yarns. You know, I have my swap partners. I have two swap partners, so I want to look for things for my swap partners. And um, I'm going to be doing, just a heads up, If keep in mind, uh, over the year, if you're interested in doing a um, advent swap at the end of the year so that you have an advent calendar to open, um, I, I, I think I'm going to host such a thing because I want to make sure I have advent calendars because I, I really enjoy doing my um, my vlogmas. I want to do that again next year and uh, and it's fun to have and I really like an advent so I'm going to make sure I have advent. I already have one planned, one person planned but to do an advent with. Hey Megan! But, um, but I'm happy to to organize a advent swap um, this year. Last year, uh, we organized it uh, with a bunch of different podcasters, and maybe we'll do the same thing again. But definitely going to do that. I was I was matched up with Helen of the Crafty Toads, which was fun. Oh my gosh, I got such gorgeous stuff. I really love the, she gave me a little, two little brass, a brass crab and a brass turtle. Oh my gosh, they're my favorite things. They're two of my favorite things I got the whole year. I love those. So, be lucky if you get, excuse me, if you get Helen or Mary Beth. But, <clears throat> anyway, those are the kinds of things, you know, I'm going to keep my eye out for goodies to put in swap packages and, um, keep my eye open for things for prize packages because we do have the year of the sweater knit along that people and oh I was supposed to pull for a prize for that and I didn't do that I'm such a jerk well I'm just giving you more time just giving you more time I'm gonna get a prize uh, I do have one prize for that already that I have to iron because I've gotten it a little wrinkly but this is a cute tote hollow bag this is in the prize but I'm gonna put some yarn in the prize and some goodies now the yarn is probably gonna come from my stash I will admit I got so much yarn that you know I probably won't buy yarn for it because I have lovely yarn I promise it'll be lovely but um maybe a little goodie or two and um you know there'll be other prizes for that because it's a year long knit along so anyway, I'll stop talking. Um, if you see me at Maryland Sheep and Wool, please say hi. 
and I will be in the studio tomorrow to make more um, stitch markers. So I have some. And if there's a meetup, I'll meet ya. But I don't know if there is or not. It's not a very formal thing. It's like it's nothing like Rhinebeck, where everybody knows where it is and when it is, and it's always the same. Maryland Sheep and Wool is not. It's not like that. So I'll try to be there if there is some such thing. Otherwise, stop me. Say hi. Let me know if you're going. I'll look for you. Um. Anyway. Bye. Happy May. It's May. It's a warm day today. Finally, it's lovely here. I hope you're having good weather, whether you're in Northern Hemisphere or Southern. And, uh, and I hope you have lots and lots of time to do the crafting that brings you joy. It does help. Crafting does help. So.